All right. Last time I did this review, I scored them at 33 out of 50 points, which was putting them only at number four in my top five AI coding apps. Now, a few months later, I want to give you a full rundown update of Lovable and let you know what I think about it. Stick around for a couple of minutes where I'm going to show you this updated scores and the reasoning behind it. And let's see how my newest leaderboard of AI coding tools looks like. Check it out. I've been doing these two reviews for a while. And today I'm going to do the update on Lovable. It's 5 Review 2.0. And as usual, we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. If you haven't watched the first video, you can find it on my channel. I'm Lazar. I'm a VP at a startup company. I was on a journey to build 50 apps in 50 weeks using AI. I'm on a slightly different challenge right now. You can see that in my channel header, trying to make 50K vibe coding, doing anything about vibe coding in 50 weeks. Currently working on project number 17. It's cargo. So that's why I do these video reviews and some hacks and other stuff. Out of the 17, 16 actually that I've deployed, a couple went on to be in top five of the lovable launched. And I beta tested it well over 10, 20 different tools by now and have a pretty successful boot camp. I'm going to talk about that in a, in a second. There's some scoring rules here. I'm trying to score every AI vibrating tool in 10 different categories, grades one to five. And this is the old leaderboard, right? This is where I left off maybe a month and a half, maybe even two months ago, right? I reviewed these five and this was the... This is how I felt at that given point in time, right? Replic first, and as I said, Lovable was fourth, right? Cursor's number two. And now things have changed more than a little bit, right? Now, before I tell you how much they've changed or do anything else, really, please understand that this is a very subjective review, right? You will definitely have a different experience and different opinion, and that is quite okay. Right. And I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm not a software engineer. None of the companies are paying me to do these. I just do them because I feel like it. And you should test these tools yourself and see how they align against the way you think, develop, build, whatever you want to do. Right. Totally okay if we're not on, on the same page here. Right. I don't have the old score with me for Lovable, but I can remember how it looked. And I definitely know what the previous score was. Right. And you saw it. It was at 33 points. I just gave it a bit of a, a hair advantage over v0 now the scoreboard looks uh, well way different right number one the ui the user interface of the tool is great they made improvements uh looks slick looks nice things are finally sitting where they're supposed to be sitting again my personal opinion right not maybe not yours that's fine i feel that the user experience and the user interface when you're first starting off is super friendly somebody Coming in, again, I'm, I'm screen share anyway, so let's just go and, and, and look at the dashboard, right? When, when you're there, you, you can see some of this stuff. This is one of the reasons why Lovable is becoming what you'll see that I've said, right? But very friendly, you can initiate Superbase before you even do anything. You can switch workspaces, you can attach images and, and, and more. Um, you can do voice controls, navigate your accounts, see your credits, a bunch of stuff. See all of your builds, click to show board. You can see when you last edited stuff, who were the creators, if you are collaborating, very friendly. This is, this is how things are supposed to look for all the other guys building these tools. If they, you're watching, this is how it's supposed to look. First shock prompt, it was always five out of five. It's still the best tool. It always was the best tool on the market. Nobody could take that away from them. When 2.0 was launched on 3.7 Sonnet, sure, there was a bit of a bump, right? But the minute they adopted Cloud 4 and tested a couple of other models recently, uh, I want to say we're back at pure dominance and flexing over any other tool in, in first shot from world. I can show you just, uh, just so that we are on the same page. I don't know what you're getting as your first shot prompts, but this is what I've got from one of my apps. To me, this is impressive. I'm not a designer. I, I would, it would take me more than one prompt to do this, right? So again, try to compete with this before you say anything bad about it, right? And I'll be the first to criticize. Uh, you can watch a bunch of my videos on my channel where I criticize Lovable. Now let's, 
now I'm being, now I'm taking a bit of a different stance because I got to give credit where credit is due, right? On the code ownership side, that is very important to me. The ability to export code, own it, host it, sell it, do whatever I want with it, have multiple deployment options for it, right? So both of those are five out of five because Lullaball allows you to export immediately and do whatever you want with it. That was always the case. That's why I give them the highest grade on this because everybody else protected it a little bit, but they've opened it under, under competitor pressure, peer pressure. Now it's everybody does it, but Lovable did it first. Adding custom domains, pulling them in super easy. You can still host stuff on their Lovable.app, which is great. All partnerships that they made, were, which allow you to have analytics under that domain or have uh, marketing created or uh, an app under that URL. So they're trying to make that own your app name, that Lovable.app, work beyond this environment, right? Which I think is very powerful and very smart because people, they don't have to buy custom domains to have all of these things, right? On the visual aspect and designing, even though we talked about first shot prompt, later down the road, I've had a fair share of problems sometimes with some margins and stuff like that and paddings, but I I'll say this and you'll, you'll see me say this in my videos. When there's a problem, it's probably your prompts, not AI. And... I will stay true and consistent to that statement. I will always blame myself first because I'm not a creative guy. So when there are issues like that, I'll, I'll put it under my bucket, but still four out of five simply because I do feel that the tools of today, if they want to win, they also need to be able to tell somebody, hey, I don't think that's a good prompt. I think you should do this differently, right? Their agent is getting better, right? In the sense that the agent itself plus the backend controls are getting better and better. Reading the logs, reading the, the, the edge function, functions, correcting their code. Still four out of five. Can't give it a, 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 a kind, of, kind of a five out of five there yet. Because, you know, there are tools on the market that are very impressive. Like Claude code is just next level. And like, that's a five out of five. Lovable is not there yet, but it's getting very, very close, right? Debugging three out of five simply because we still run into some debugging loops with it, like, especially again, if it's a smaller issue, if it's like a syntax issue or whatever, it kind of gets into this weird loop. I don't know why. So that still needs to be reworked a little bit, right? If I'm critical, this is probably now the worst part of Lovable, just that debugging side of things, right? The, however, the things where they improve the most are probably these, especially support for newcomers, right? Lo, not, I'm, a, I'm a legacy account user. So I don't see what new users see, but I've seen the flows where there's onboarding, guided onboarding in the app when you have your first shot prompt somewhere around this right, bottom right corner. Uh, tool tips are being explained. Like I've seen those wireframes um, and I, I think it's we're, we're miles ahead of where we were um, months and months ago when, when it came to lovable, not being there to explain it to people, right? And on the pricing side, I think, you know, sure, anything can be better priced, but Lovable recently has made a lot of great moves to save people money too. One of the, the ways to do so was announced, and as you saw it earlier in this very video, it just went live. But like, uh, among other things that were published, such as libraries, which I'm going to talk about in a second uh, today, uh, uh, Having a world-class team, which again, Felix and Elena, Averna are part of that are amazing people. Credits roll over, huge deal, right? Huge, huge deal on the pricing side. So you, you'll be able to hoard your credits. You don't have to spend them all to keep being able to spend them. Prompt hacks to help you out, spend them and free collaboration. I mean, just a bunch of changes that just happened in the last, literally last month or so. Just good moves, one after the other on their roadmap, right? Which puts us in a completely different spot and compared to before and puts Lovable at an amazing 43 out of 50, right? 10 points, 10 additional points from the past. And here's why, like, so that people don't come in and say, oh my God, he just gave them 10 points, but that's the, I mean, I, it doesn't make sense. Just look at, look at my notes. And I gave them literally around point for each and one of these. They had a great recovery after a 2.0 fiasco. Added Claude 4 on day one. Not all companies had that. 
They have lovable ship. Great, great, great initiative for people, for builders. They're giving away $3 million or more in perks, right? They're really trying to work this South Fork community. So complete shift in narrative there. Rockstar team and much better user onboarding. Like you can see a huge change with the recent hires, right? Improved visual edits design. Like again, visual editing was a little bit clunky initially. Again, it was getting better and better. Now you get this live preview tool tip. It may take a second to load, but it's far more comprehensive. Not to mention the lovable mobile, like not the mobile display thing here, but mobile as in you going on your cell phone and you be lovable, right? That's, that's just, uh, uh, you know, been way, 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 way better, right? Here, yeah, you can see it now. I can ask for changes, prompt for changes directly here. I think this is pretty cool. Um, and um, uh, uh, lots of other changes on the upcoming features. Again, we talked about credits rollover and free collaboration and libraries. Libraries are, to me, that's the main thing, right? People starting off don't know what they can do. When we, the creators that are using this tool for, in my case, for a year now, um, can build templates that people can just take over, clone, and, and maybe you make some money from them. I mean, that's just going to be a massive creator economy driven platform. And that's big. That helps everybody. That helps us. That helps these users save more money because they're not starting from scratch. And with rollovers and collaboration, I can jump in and help somebody without them having to pay for a higher monthly fee if I got a debug for them. That's massive. That's really massive. On the side notes, I'm seeing some movement that's interesting. I don't have any confirmation of any of these claims, right? But I will say what, I've, what I'm seeing. Anton, the CEO and the founder, just invested along many, many others into Polar. Polar is... The future of payments, it sees for SaaS, right? So if we look at Polar.sh, right? They are getting mentioned everywhere. I've seen Mark Clu mentioning that he has support in uh, that fast for them. I've seen them mentioned all over the place, right? So I think and hope that means we're going to have native payments, which would be massive if, we, if they came to level. And team expansion, again, they went beyond Stockholm. I always thought that that whole like, oh, they got to be in office in Sweden. Like you're, you're eliminating yourself from the battle and competing on the best talent in the world. Now I'm seeing people from Dublin. I'm seeing people from all parts of the world, right? Germany, from, from New York, from Atlanta, like Talisha is, or, you know, like just this huge expansion of team to be global, I think is a very, very, very good move. And so that affects our leaderboard completely and puts Lovable at number one on the list alongside Cursor, to be fair. I did not do a new review of Cursor, but I'm putting them one next to the other simply because I feel each of them are dominating in their own categories. The reason why Lovable is number one is because you, you can work in Lovable without Cursor, but I, I almost feel you can't do it the other way around, and I'm Totally okay with people saying that I'm wrong about this claim, but that's how I strong my strong belief that the best combo is if you use these tools to get unlovable. You finish the 80, 90 percent, and then the final 10 percent of just cleaning stuff up, cleaning the code and stuff like that is in cloud code in cursor. It is a very powerful workflow that I'm recording a video on for my channel coming up very very soon after this one. Uh, so make sure to subscribe in order to watch it, right? And then again, as I said, if you want to learn how to vibe code yourself and if you want to learn how to use Lovable yourself today, make sure to click in the link in the description of this video or just simply visit uh, buildstarstory.com or the link that I'm going to give you where with Starter Story, I'm helping you alongside Pat Walls to learn how to build stuff with Lovable Superbase. Get her here. I don't, I've never used anything. I've used ChatGPT five times in my life or whatever, all the way to the full home stretch of launching your application. So that's it for my review, guys. Again, I'll see you in the next videos. Peace out.